Mr. Singhvi. You know, every time there is a situation of political instability, uh, legal options are definitely explored. I want to ask you today, what are the legal options that lie before Mr. Rudhav Thakre when the numbers clearly seem to be stacked against him? Uh, there is a very strong uh, political aspect here, but I'll not go into that since you're asking me completely legal options, and I'll try and give a conceptual answer. And I'm not giving an answer only from Mr. Udhav Thakre's viewpoint. Option number one legal is clear if they really did have the magic number and that 37 was crossed and therefore there was no anti-defection. Then normally I would have expected by now a claim, a formal claim for forming the government filed with the governor, followed with a parade of the requisite number. I don't find that yet. Instead, I find a strange letter by Mr. Shinde claiming letter to the governor asking to be recognized as the CLP leader, whereas the governor has no role in that at all. That's an intra-party matter. That leads me to think that Mr. Shinde does not have the requisite numbers and the BGP and Mr. Shinde's combined do not have the requisite numbers. Otherwise, you would have had that letter by now. And that is the best proof that the figures which we have seen floating since yesterday from 30 to 35 to 37 to 42 to 46 to 45 perhaps are more ambitious and illusory than they appear to be. Second option is that, uh, Mr. that a properly filed complaint from on behalf of the Udav Thakre group with the deputy speaker, because there is no speaker there, is received. It is then followed by a notice by the deputy speaker to the opposite side, so-called. The opposite side appears, files whatever they have to file, the matter is heard. And on the basis of the material and the hearing, the MLAs are disqualified or the MLAs are not disqualified depending on what the speaker holds. Now, that is option number two. However, that option does have an inbuilt time lag, notice, counter, rejoinder, arguments, etc. And that is the second issue, by which time it is possible that with the time lag, the fruits of the poisonous tree are already consumed and benefits those who have actually planted the poisonous fruit. Third is the shenanigans which have developed in the course of time on Indian defection law. For example, you can circumvent a lot of defection law by simply reducing the size of the house. An assembly of 100 by 25 resignations can be made into an assembly of 75. And then in that 75, a reduced number can form a majority. And then after you change the government with this illegal means, the very same people who have defected or caused this confusion can be made ministers and then getting a further lease of life of six months to be re-elected. Now, there is a whole movement out there saying that no, this should be a disqualification for them for the entire term and they should not be allowed to become ministers and be re-elected. But that's not the law today. And that loophole has been exploited in the past. The fourth is that if Mr. Thakare miraculously finds within tonight and tomorrow, that he has the large uh, requisite number, then he is entitled to, in fact, move for a motion of confidence. I'm not saying it will happen. I'm not saying it will not happen. I'm just giving you the legal option. Right. 